Hey, I'm Lisa Canning and welcome to my YouTube channel. Come and take a seat with me. Today I'm talking about balance. Does it exist? Is the pursuit of it futile? Take a seat with me and let's talk. Welcome to my kitchen. This video is a real talk and this series of videos is stuff that is um, important. This stuff that we talk about in these videos I think um, it's not fluffy. It's stuff that I think can have a real impact, um, make a real difference in, um, in, in your life. These things that I talk about in this series are really important to me. And may I just first start out with saying that, boy, am I tired. I am so sorry. I've been a little MIA on my channel. Um, I have been, um, we've just been in a lot of transition, all good things, just a ton of transition for my family, which I'll definitely share in videos to come. Uh, but I'm so sorry I haven't been um, as frequent. I'm really happy to be back on track and back on schedule. A warm welcome if you're joining me over from Rach Loves from our recent collaboration on her little girls room and little boys room. Um, you guys are amazing. So if you're new here to my channel, a big warm welcome. I invite you now to take <laughs> your glass and have a drink with me. Come and take a seat. We're going to get into some real talk on balance. But first, this is White House Wine Co. from Ontario, St. Catharines, which is exciting, not too far from my home in Toronto, Canada. And it's time to have a nice white wine. I really like a white wine in the summer because it's just so refreshing when it's so hot. Um, side note, it is so hot in Toronto, Canada, but I feel like you cannot complain when you come from a city or a... Um, a space that is typically cold. Our summers are so short, so I feel like we can't complain when it's hot, although it's so hot. But anyways, cheers. I'm so happy you're here with me. Mm. So balance has been on my mind a lot lately, and a lot of my uh, fellow friends and colleagues have been talking a lot about balance on YouTube. So Cat and Nat just did something hilarious on balance. Mike Kim, a marketing uh, guru, did something and so did the beautiful Amanda Muse. And I'll link to their, their videos uh, below. Um, so if you wanna see what they think about balance, you definitely can check them out. Uh, so balance has been a lot on my mind, especially because our family has been in quite a bit of transition. And I've been really trying to reimagine and revision how I am going to run my business so that I can basically um, have more balance. So balance, the basic definition of balance is like this, right? It's like, are we actually kind of like a seesaw? Are we actually balanced? And, um, you know, as a working parent, I run an interior design company in Toronto, Canada. I have six small children ages eight and under. Um, I basically have failed <laughs> many, 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 many times at this whole balance gig. And I used to, um, I mean, not, I don't know if I never, if I ever really thought of it as like a 50-50 kind of balance, but I certainly really beat myself up in the past um, for whatever I sort of in my head pictured a balanced life to look like. Um, and I guess what experience has shown me is that the, this definition of balance where it's like really even when you are a working parent, I, I don't think is possible. There are a couple of definitions that I find a little bit more helpful. So one definition of balance that I really like is James Clear. Um, I'm not. I can't remember if he actually. I'll link to it in, in, below for sure. I can't remember if he actually um, posited this this notion of the burners. But basically, he talks about life as, um, or he presented this thing like if you were to imagine life like your stove with five burners. And the five burners represent various aspects of your life. Um, I can't remember exactly what he said, but you know, physical, um, your friendships, so your health, friendships, work, um, you know, your spiritual life maybe, and hobbies. And basically something like, they can't all be burning on, on full steam at the same time. Uh, you really can only have a few. So that was a really interesting thing. I'll definitely um, link that below. And then my lovely friend um, Mona from The Balanced Mum Life and Mike Kim have said similar things uh, where basically balance is more about um, the appropriate attention given at the appropriate place at the appropriate time. So balance really is more about appropriate attention given in the appropriate place at the appropriate time and that resonates a lot more with me. So let's unpack that a little bit more in this Real Talk video. And by the way, Real Talk videos, 
Uh, it's basically a series where I just sit down and talk about real stuff. This isn't fluffy stuff. This is stuff that can have like real impact and real change and real significance, um, you know, in our lives. So I invite you to, uh, you can definitely take a peek at other videos that I have uh, recorded on, a bit, you know, a bit more serious and a bit more um, significant topics. So as I mentioned, I've been running my interior design uh, company for the last 10 years. And I would say for three quarters of it, I really struggled with any sense of balance, which means that I basically worked all the time, around the clock. And I mean work expanded into every single nook and cranny of spare time I had. So it wasn't like, you know, I was, <laughs> I basically, work took the most important priority out of all of my priorities in life. It's very challenging for me to even be honest about this, to be very, very honest, because um, I am, I think from the outside looking in, people um, have, you know, made comments, and I'm like within this time period that I'm talking about, where, oh wow, it looks like you've, you know, really have it all together, and you know, you have so many children, um, and you're running a business, my goodness, like you, you, you're, you're just so, so balanced, or wow, you have, you really have it all together, and um, you know, I would smile, and I would, I would, you know, be very poised, but really, I would just sort of in my head be like, if you only knew the truth. Um, so it's even really difficult to articulate it, because for so long, I struggled with not letting work literally rule my life. And I think I scraped by only because, number one, my husband is extremely patient. And he gave me quite a bit of, I guess, leniency or, or, or grace, I suppose. Um, but basically what happened was that, you know, I think a relationship can only take so much. I think, um, you know, when you make something else more important than a person, that relationship is going to suffer. And that's basically what happened, is that I allowed work to permeate everything at the expense of my health, at the expense of the most important relationships in my life, which include, for me, uh, God, my spouse, and my kids. And it really suffered and I can remember so clearly two instances that I want to share with you. Number one was sitting in my minivan and if I can paint you the picture of what my minivan looked like, it was a disaster. There were goldfish crackers on the ground, multiple water bottles that were empty crumpled all around me. My passenger side uh, seat was full of like interior design things like fabric samples and paint chips and drawings and all kinds of stuff. I had like multiple car seats behind me, Tim Hortons cups and Wendy's and McDonald's bags everywhere because I was basically living in my car eating almost every meal out because I was working so much. Um, oh, even just recalling it makes me feel just terrible. And um, and yeah, and I, I, I remember sitting in the car that day, looking around at the mess of my life and just feeling like, oh my gosh, Lisa, like your priorities are so messy right now. There's another instance that I can remember that I'd love to share with you where at the end of a very, very busy period of work, um, you know, my, my husband was just sort of hanging on by a thread, uh, asking me, when is this period done? You know, when is this over? When are our lives going back to normal? When are you not going to be working literally like 16 hours a day? Um, and I basically, you know, promised everybody, oh my gosh, okay, Christmas holidays, we're going to go to the cottage, it's going to be awesome. And at the cottage, um, we did this little exercise where you had to describe um, what the past year was like to you in one word. And my husband used the word vice grip. That ain't a pretty picture. And so those two instances, I just want to share them with you because when I put too much emphasis on work, so many other things suffered. 
and I don't think it's a, you know and this is it's this is a real challenge for working mothers for working parents how do you make sure that there are um, you know certain boundaries certain things in place so that you can achieve some balance so that your relationships do not go um, south so that you know you have some semblance of health that you take care of yourself I learned the very hard way what does not work. I wrote an Instagram post not too long ago and I asked people if you agree with me, if you think that while work is important but it should not be to the expense of your health and your most important relationships, leave me a heart. And it was pretty amazing how many people um, commented and you know how, how it resonated with people. I'll link to that post below if you're interested in seeing people's responses because it was really interesting to me um, that we I think in a society where work is so valued where the output that we you know put into the universe is just so valued and applauded um, it's so easy to, you know, hustle hard, hustle and be busy and sort of with pride and with a badge of honor say, I'm so busy when people ask you, how are you doing? Busy! I, I hate the word busy. I also hate the word hustle. I believe that you, you do have to hustle at times, but hustle should not be all the time. It cannot be all the time because, like I said, the most important relationships in your life and your health will suffer. So, how do we make sure that this does not happen? How do we make sure that you're not sitting in a minivan full of crap <laughs> like I was? How do you make sure that when you ask your spouse, you know, what was last year, what was last year in a word to you? They don't say my script. How do we actually do this? So I'd like to share, uh, you know, after I turned the corner, after I, um, you know, kind of realize that something in my life has to change. I'd like to share a couple of strategies that I've used in the last two years especially that have helped me uh, to live a more balanced life and to still really enjoy my work but more importantly really enjoy the things that are most important to me which includes my faith and my family. So if you are looking for more balance here are a few of my suggestions. So my first strategy, if you were looking to ensure that there is balance in your life between work and everything else, is to define what success means for you. What do I mean by that? So success can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, and the kind of success that I'm talking about, I'm not talking about you know the fact that you drive an Audi and that you carry a Louis Vuitton bag. Um, I'm talking about the kind of kind of success that are based around your greatest priorities. So again, like I mentioned, for me, my faith and my family are very important to me. And I have learned to put those things first and then let work fill in the space around those things. So what does success look like for me in terms of my faith? Uh, I'm a Catholic and I would really like it if I'm able to get to Mass once or twice a week outside of my Sunday regular practice. So success for me in my faith life is the ability to get to Mass one or two times a week. So what does that mean? I have to, um, I go to Mass very early in the morning before the kids have breakfast. That means that I have to go to bed early the night before to make sure I can get up. It means that um, it's helpful if the kitchen is sort of clean-ish and I can uh, prepare, um, you know, breakfast or whatnot before I go, that kind of a thing. So being able to go and just be peaceful and just sort of, um, have space to prayerfully, um, you know, invest in my spiritual life in the week is really important. That's a measure of success for me. Another measure of success for me, um, where my family is concerned, is I really want to be able to be home when my children come home from school five days a week. I don't mind if there's the odd exception, and of course there will be because um, it just, you know, sometimes you cannot be home by. Um, you know, 3.30 or whatnot when uh, kids walk in the door because of various appointments. But on a regular rule where when if I can control an appointment, I like to um, ensure that I'm home at the time they come home from school. So that's success to me in a week. So that means that I have to, um, you know, stop an appointment at a certain time, hit a hard boundary um, so that I can be there when my kids are home. Um, it means that um, I have to take on the kind of work that will allow me to have hard stops, that has flexibility, uh, the kind of work where I am not in an office 
um, and have to be there. So for me, I plan very carefully um, and, and have designed my business in that way to, again, respond to the fact that success for me is being home for my kids coming home from school five days a week. Um, and uh, another measure of success for me is a uh, date night with my husband once a week. So basically we have a recurring appointment in my calendar where we, uh, you know, book childcare. And um, it's, uh, I've, I've learned again the hard way that if you don't invest in your marriage, it doesn't exactly take care of itself. <laughs> Learn that the hard way. Uh, and so um, we've really just been... Um, you know, I kind of thought, oh, this is frivolous, this is flippant, we don't have time for a date every week, my gosh, like there's so many other things to do. But I, I just found that when you prioritize the most important relationships in your life, um, I believe that other space opens up. I believe that, um, you know, the, the time, if you're worried about, oh my gosh, I can't go on a date night because I have so much housework to do, I really do believe that when you put that relationship first, things work out that, you know, the other things do get done. I, I just really believe that um, when we put first things first, everything else kind of works out. So the first question to ask yourself if you are desiring more balance is, what does success look like to you? The second strategy for achieving balance in your life, especially if you are a parent, so this goes back to um, that whole notion that um, my friend Mona um, Corwin uh, says so many times on her platform you've got to give attention where it's needed when it's needed for the appropriate time so rewinding back to my time period before the minivan breakdown I should coin this term the minivan breakdown <laughs> before the minivan breakdown work was forever like work never ended and so according to my friends definition of balance that's not the appropriate time. Like I did not give appropriate stops to work. Basically it was forever and then I would squeeze in time with my kids and squeeze in times with my spouse in the times when I was not working. Um, and I think it's important to have that mind shift to be able to say, work, you are really important so I'm going to give you my full intention, full attention. Children, spouse, you are so important. I am now going to stop and give you my full attention. And I just think it can be so easy to be like, okay, kids, yeah, you're fine, la, 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 and like, you know, continue, continue, continue. Um, and I don't know, just experiences show me that it doesn't work, you know? I, it, it just doesn't work. But to, again, have separation when possible so that when you're at work, you're at work and there's appropriate time being given to that appropriate task for appropriate, um, you know, the word is appropriate, you know, that it's appropriate. And then when you're home, there are times that are almost sacred. It's like, this is family time for basically, I'm, I hate to admit it, and it's honestly like, I'm, I'm, it's challenging even for me to say this out loud, but for basically like, you know, six years of my life as a parent, I didn't have good boundaries. It's only been in the last two years that I would say I have um, constructed my life so that I can um, be present to my, my family in a more focused way. Um, and it really just, oh, it just really pains me. And I, I think it's the reason why I'm very passionate about this channel and I'm passionate about these topics because I just like I felt really hard and really flat on my face just so many times and you think you'd learn <laughs> you think I would have learned you know and, and it's 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 funny because I remember my husband and I reflecting back on the pre minivan meltdown period um, just talking about how like how many times does it take to make a mistake before you actually learn and I just kept making the exact same mistake. I, I literally just kept saying, hang on everybody, this period will be over, you know, just a little bit longer. I, but I just really believe that like, we can't do that that much. Like it just can't, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, just doesn't work if it's indefinite, you know? And again, there. if you're listening to this and you're like, oh gosh, Lisa, like, you know, forget it. Like I, this is way too, um, you know, what's the words? This is way too idealized. There's no way this works in the real world. And I just want to say, like, I totally, 
I totally get where you're coming from and I definitely felt the same thing. I, there were times when I was just like, there's no way I am going to be able, like my, my business will not exist if I don't work this hard. My business will not make money for my family if I don't work around the clock. I had a mindset that that was what was true. But can I share with you, it's just not, <laughs> it's not. I really believe that all mothers especially can design their lives around their greatest priorities and still come out a winner in the end. Still come out, you know, making money for their family if you are um, an earner, um, if you are going to work in an office or if you are running your own business and you still can spend time with your children and you still can have a sense of self. I just believe that so much in my heart because pre-minivan meltdown, it wasn't happening, but post-minivan meltdown, um, I definitely feel the light, you know? So I just want to give you hope. If you're exhausted and you feel like, oh my gosh, will this ever end? I believe that it can for you. And, um, you know, let me know, like, what are you struggling with the most? What is it about balancing work and family and personal things that um, has you the most just, like, caught up and frustrated? What is it that you can't figure out? Leave me a comment below and let's talk about it. So a couple strategies again. Number one, really clearly outline what success looks like for you. Number two, when you're at work, be at work. When you're at home with your kids, be at home with your kids. And make sure that you're spending you know, appropriate attention um, in the appropriate place for the appropriate time. And then my final tip in regards to achieving balance is to live in your strengths. So I talk about this a lot ad nauseum, I feel like, on my channel, and I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing about it, but I have this, this tool called Strength Finder that I absolutely love. It's changed my life incredibly, and anytime I introduce it to somebody new, um, it seems to really change their life too. Strength Finder is a test you take um, where it ranks your top five strengths out of 34 predetermined um, traits and the beautiful thing about strength finder is essentially it tells you the five things that you are the most good at what you are the most hardwired to excel at to thrive in and that's where you should remain and so the reason why I think strength finder is so important and how it really helped me was in when you when you have the time um, where you've got dedicated work time uh, aside from the dedicated family time. So when you are in the dedicated work time, um, <clears throat> there are always more things to do, I feel like, than there are time to do them. And so I think too, what you've got to do is just get really strategic about the things that only I can do. And this is where Strength Finder is super key because basically you can put all of these tasks, all of these to-do lists, all of these requests through this filter of like, are these things like things that really only I can do or so could somebody else do them? Um, and again, really, you know, focus. So the next time somebody asks you, hey, you know, Lisa, could you like serve on this PTA committee? Um, we really could use your help. You can think about it and be like, does this fit within the realm of my top strengths and something that only I can do? Or perhaps this is something that somebody else would be really good at instead. Or the next time um, a client asks you to take a project that's kind of like just beyond your typical scope of work, but not terribly beyond it, but it is kind of beyond it, and you're humming and hawing, oh, I could use the money, you know, this would be great, this is a new experience. But again, if it doesn't really fit, things tend to expand. And I find when things expand, that's when those hazy lines of like, okay, work time, family time can start to really bleed. And I think that's also when um, it can just get really messy and um, where balance can really be lost. So my third strategy absolutely is to uh, take a peek into Strength Finder and try as much as possible to ensure that all the activities in your life um, revolve around uh, your, your strengths where possible. And again, it's not a perfect science. I'm not trying to say that I have it all figured out, but what I have figured out is how not to do it. <laughs> and so I share all of this in a spirit of, um, you know, my, my deep belief that all moms can design their lives around their greatest priorities. 
you can go to work and have fulfillment in what you do and contribute to your family and pursue your goals and dreams, but you can also, and not at the expense of having an amazing marriage, an amazing family, and uh, just being really um, happy and content in, um, in your family life. If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. And I really want to know, what do you struggle with in regards to balance? What do you want to know more about? What do you wish you knew more of uh, so that you could um, live a life that's a little bit more balanced where maybe work isn't um, permeating everything? Um, I would love for you to leave me a comment below. Let's have a conversation. And uh, definitely hit the subscribe button so you can know when I publish new videos. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to spend time with you. And cheers. Oh, my glass is empty. <laughs> cheers to designing your beautiful life.